Over the past 12 months, Google Ads has been rolling out some dramatic changes to the way that Google Ads works. In fact, since 2010, when I first started in Google Ads, I have to say that the last 12 months have seen the most changes that I've seen in Google Ads for a very long time. And these changes include replacing expanded text ads with responsive search ads, changing the way that the keyword match types function, and also introducing the new campaign type, Performance Max campaigns. And all three of these changes have drastically changed the way that Google Ads operates, but more importantly, it's changed the way that you need to optimize your Google Ads campaigns. So because of all these changes, I wanna take you through the top three strategies that no longer work in Google Ads. And the first one of these is ad groups based around keyword match types. Now this strategy became really, really popular in and around 2017. And the reason for why it became popular, because it was working really well at that time. And how the strategy would work is, is that when you came to a keyword theme like baby earmuffs, is that you would set up three separate ad groups targeting those same group of keywords, baby earmuffs, but in different ways. So you would have one ad group which had baby earmuffs in broad match, you would have another ad group which had baby earmuffs and different variations in phrase match, and then a third ad group which would once again have baby earmuffs and some other variations, but all in exact match. And then from there you could review the results and then just simply pause the match type or the ad groups which were underperforming. However, with Google changing the way that match types work so that they're now not just targeting the keywords that you enter, but it's actually targeting the meaning of those keywords. This means that you could have exact match keywords which are triggering your ads for search terms which don't even appear in that exact match keyword. And the reason for this is because Google is deeming that the exact match keywords that you entered have the same meaning as the search term that the user entered. And if you still have those three different ad groups functioning, targeting the different match types for exact match, phrase match, and broad match, what will be happening is any different optimizations that you add into your broad match or your phrase match may still appear in your exact match ad group. So the strategy which is working now for targeting different groups of keywords is to use the one keyword theme method where you have all of those grouped keywords which have the same theme or the meaning in one ad group. And then in that ad group, you need to go through and complete regular search term audits. Now, if this is a new ad group, I recommend completing those search term audits every 72 hours, so two to three times a week. And then once you've completed this process for a good couple of months, you can bring that down to once a week or every seven days. And by completing these search term audits, what you're doing is you're reviewing the search terms which Google is using to trigger your ads. And then from there, you can select the different keywords which you know are not relevant or you know are not gonna convert, and then you can add them as extra negative keywords to stop your ads being triggered by those search terms in future uses. And the second strategy for Google Ads that no longer works in 2022 as we lead into 2023 is to set your CPA or your ROAS targets too early. Right now in Google Ads in the recommendations tab, you'll be getting recommendations to set a CPA target or a ROAS target within the first three to four weeks of setting up a Google Ads campaign. And this is absolutely crazy. And this is actually a discussion that which I had with Google Ads here in Australia in about the reason for why they're giving this recommendation when we all know that it's not gonna be beneficial for your account. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to turn off this recommendation. All you can do is that when you do get this recommendation is to reject it, full well knowing that it will appear back in your account in another three to four weeks. But what I wanna do right now is to give you a background of why you're getting this recommendation and why it's not relevant, and more importantly, the reason for why if you set a CPA or ROAS target too early, it will actually hinder your campaign's performance. The main thing that you need to understand when it comes to this recommendation of adding in a CPA target or a ROAS target is that Google is not only looking at your account's data, because Google is basing that recommendation off indexed data off other campaigns which Google deems to be a competitor of your campaign. So if Google is giving you a CPA target of $15 and saying that you should add this into your account, the big issue with this is that this could be based off data in other campaigns which aren't actually a direct competitor of yours. And let me show you what I mean by this. The data that I'm showing you here is within the Auctions Insight, and you can see this in your own campaign, 
by going into the keywords section and then clicking on auction insights. And this campaign is for a baby earmuff. And for this seller, they only sell baby earmuffs. So out of all of this list, the only direct competitor would be ear jobs and also baby bunting. Although even with baby bunting, they are a full baby store, so they're selling multiple products. But when you come up to here like Amazon and also Chemist Warehouse, and if you're unaware, Chemist Warehouse is a large retailer here in Australia, and it's listing these two domains as its main competitors. The reason for that is because yes, Amazon and Chemist Warehouse do sell baby earmuffs, but that is such a small percentage of their total offering that it wouldn't even rate and they should not actually be in this auction insight. But hopefully you can see the problem here is because Google is using these websites like Amazon and Chemist Warehouse. Also this one here for Audio Era, which is for adult products, not baby earmuff products, is that these are the URLs which Google is basing its recommendation for a CPA target. So the first issue with this recommendation from Google and by setting your CPA targets too early is that this information may be based off URLs and websites which are not direct competitors for your products. And then taking this a step further, the other issue with this is that it's comparing data which may not be the same as yours. So for example, in your store, you may only be interested in end conversions, so purchases and transactions, versus your competitors who are also happy to track other conversion data as their primary conversions like click to calls or even store visits. So Google is giving you that recommendation of how much each conversion should cost, but it is using different types of conversions to give you that data. And this is the big problem with adding in that CPA or that ROAS target too early, is that you could potentially be limiting the total performance of your account. Because once you set that ROAS or once you set that CPA target, you're giving Google a very, very strong signal that that is the level where you are happy to see your cost per conversion or to see your conversion value cost. So for example, if you set a CPA target at $15, but you actually wanna get down to $5, your campaign will never achieve that because you've told Google that you're happy for that CPA to be at 15. So what you need to do, rather than using the Google recommendation and by setting in that CPA or that ROAS target really, really early, for the first 15 through to 90 days, you wanna be starting with a maximized clicks campaign setting and then you wanna move over to a maximized conversions or a maximized conversions value setting. With the main factor of when you're making that change is that when you start to see daily conversions trigger in your campaign. And that's why you've got that range of 15 days through to 90 days, because sometimes you might achieve that in the first three weeks, other times it might take you two or even three months to start getting those results. And then when you've got that maximized conversions or that maximized conversions value campaign setting working in your campaign, you then wanna keep going through and following through our usual optimization process. And we don't wanna add in that CPA or that ROAS target until we start to see a stagnation in our results. So what you wanna be looking for is you wanna be looking for when you're seeing a month on month steadying of your results. So for this campaign, we would be looking at setting a target ROAS goal. So what we're looking at is this conversion value cost. And you can see from our initial optimizations, we got this to increase up to around about that seven, 7.3. And then from there, it stayed in around that 6.3 through that at seven range. And we haven't been able to see any drastic increases in the performance of our campaign like we saw at this start of the campaign. So what I would be doing here is that we would then go through and add in a target ROAS because for this one, we're currently set with a campaign setting which is focusing on maximizing conversion value. If you just had your campaign set at maximize conversions, you'd be doing the same process but looking at the CPA or the cost per conversion metric, which is this one in here. So rather than just quickly setting that target ROAS or that CPA goal in your Google Ads a campaign, as soon as Google gives you that recommendation, what you need to do is follow that process of firstly starting with maximize clicks, then moving over to that maximize conversions, and finally adding in that CPA target when you start to see your results plateau, and then you use that CPA target to step up and gradually increase the results that you're seeing 
in your Google Ads campaign. And now we come to our third and final strategy, which no longer works for Google Ads, and that is to set up and use a catch-all shopping campaign. Now to clarify here, I've never liked catch-all shopping campaigns. I've never seen any success with them, and when I review an account which has a catch-all campaign, for me, especially if this has been run by another digital agency, it just screams of laziness. In that the agency couldn't be bothered taking the extra time, because it does take some extra time, to set up a shopping campaign with defined ad groups set around different product categories. And then within those individual ad groups, you've also broken out those products so that they're not in large groupings. You're seeing those individual products or if you've got a whole heap of different products, you're at least seeing the product feed in different product subcategories. And the reason for why this is so important and why that catch-all campaign just doesn't work is because the Google algorithm will continue to push products based on impressions as opposed to prioritizing the products which are gonna have the highest click-through ratio and the highest conversion rates. And what I mean by that is that Google Ads would continue to show these products which aren't getting as high amount of results. So let's look at this cost, so we'll filter it down by cost. You can see here that these top two products in terms of the amount spent had really high cost per conversions versus this third product which had a cost per conversion well under half of these top two. And if you also look here, this ROAS or this conversion value cost was far higher at 8.9 as opposed to 2.1 and 2.42. As we go down, and you see these other two products, once again, have a much better cost per conversion and a higher conversion value cost. But Google kept showing these top two products and spending a lot more money with them, even though these other campaigns had much better conversion metrics. So by having this as a catch-all campaign, you've just got to scroll through mountains and mountains and mountains of data. But by breaking this out into different ad groups and also different product groups, you can very quickly focus your spending on those different product groups and products, especially if they're set at different ad group levels, to focus your spending on those ad groups and product groups which are giving you the highest amount of conversions for the lowest cost. But as we saw, if they're just in that catch-all campaign, it just becomes far too difficult for you to be able to filter out the different products which are underperforming. So rather than using that catch-all campaign, which is really easy to do because you just need to click a couple of buttons, you need to take the time to set out your shopping campaigns and your performance max campaigns into different asset groups or product groups and also into different ad groups. And what this does is that it allows you to then make even major decisions. So if you see a whole product category underperforming, you can just quite simply turn off that asset group or pause that ad group. So in light of all of the changes that Google Ads has been making over the past 12 months, and for the remainder of 2022, and as we head into 2023, you need to be very, very clear on this point, that if you wanna see success with your Google Ads campaigns, you don't only need to make sure that you're setting up your campaigns in the correct way, but that you also have a strategy and a schedule for how you're gonna optimize your Google Ads campaigns. And this is why I've created my Google Ads optimization checklist, which is a checklist that lets you know exactly what you need to be optimizing in your Google Ads campaigns every 72 hours, every week, every month, and every 90 days. And I've just updated this. So if you've got my old Google Ads optimization checklist, still go through, follow that link in the description so you can get your updated copy today. And once you've followed that link in the description below and you've got my updated copy of my Google Ads optimization checklist, the next important step that you need to do is you need to go through and review your change history so you know whether your optimizations are making a difference. And more importantly, of whether that is a positive or a negative difference. And if you wanna see how to complete this process, you just need to go through and watch this video right here. Thank you again. See you next time.